Pastor uh, Clintard Howard Childress uh, is a prominent um, preacher. He has the powerful website, blackgenocide.org. And he's, of course, uh, written several books, one of them, No Shepherd's Cry. And he also has been in films and documentaries and CBN uh, exposing that 52% of blacks never make it out of the womb. And, and I've had him on before because when I've been at debates or at interviews or out in public and I run into Democratic operatives who will come over mainly black and say, oh, it's Alex Jones, the racist. I look at him and I say, you know, I, I'm somebody who's a libertarian constitutional Christian who wants to bring people together. I'm a classical liberal in the Thomas Jefferson vein. And I care about the content of how you act and what you stand for. If you're an incredible mind, an incredible musician, a neat person, I want to hang out with you regardless of what color you are. And I said, you know, you know, how dare you talk like that? Oh, yeah, whatever. And I go, hey, you're the folks that push abortion. Are you against aborting all these black babies? No, there are too many black people, too many weeds. And since then, you've seen abortion doctors and people, one of them Asian, saying, nobody wants these ugly black babies. I have had black people working at, at Access TV for over a decade constantly get in my face, Democratic operatives, and say, I'm sick of your anti-abortion, Jones. Who's going to adopt these black babies? Nappy-headed, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's like a thing they would say. And now you've seen videos of blacks saying that online and Planned Parenthood saying that. But it's like a thing they say. And I would always be freaked out by it. I'm racist because I'm white because I don't want to chop up black babies. And back then, I would have a lot of anti-abortion people on the local show. We'd go out and protest the Planned Parenthood in East Austin, mainly blacks going in. And because I didn't want black women to murder their children, I'm racist. Now, you got to remember that, folks. I don't like Obamacare. I'm racist. And I know I've talked to Childress before. We've interviewed him for films and things. He says he's heard and seen that same thing. And then you see the disdain and the hatred that the Romneys would adopt a black baby instead of it being chopped up by MSNBC. Sir, I want you to talk about the black genocide agenda and where it's going under Obamacare and the globalists. But uh, I'm going from memory that you say you've heard those same type of stories. Can you relay that attitude or, or is my memory wrong that when I've had you on and talked about that, you've heard that exact same statement? Oh, uh, habitually. Uh for an, and for an African-American preacher to make those comments and draw attention to the disproportionate amount of African-Americans who are systemically being targeted. Even when we come up with the facts, we're Uncle Toms, we're being used by the system, uh, we're flunkies, we're, we, we, we surrendered our devotion to African-Americans. It's very befuddling and confusing when we stand attempting to point to the simple fact, and it's very easily proven that African-Americans are being targeted by the abortion industry and the platform that they use to seduce African-Americans is clearly the Democratic Party. And some of the biggest sellouts are in the Democratic Party. There's no question about it. And I believe they're basically embarrassed by it, that they could be bamboozled in such a way. But the evidence is very clear. Uh, 1,786 African-American children are killed each day by abortion. 52% of all African-American pregnancies end in abortion. We make up roughly 12.4% of the population and 36% of the abortions now. Oh, so it's yeah. up from 52%. Oh, it's, no, it's 52% of all African-American pregnancies end in abortion. Yes. That's, that's the last data. But I was saying uh, basically one third of all abortions are African-Americans. Yeah. Now, to my pain, but I should not have been surprised, I can say to your audience, I have complete evidence that the Congressional Black Caucus knows those statistics. And upon learning of them, they actually caucus together to come up with talking points, how to refute people like myself and the growing, swelling grassroots movement of people beginning to question their politicians on these facts. And, and by the way, what you're talking about is they were shown MAFA 21 and it turned yes. out they knew the truth. And, yes. it's, and it, tell people about that. And, and more or less, they were more concerned, as most narcissistic politicians are, about their own power, about getting reelected, and not offending the Democratic Party. You got to understand, the line has been drawn in the sand here. 
with Obamacare. We knew it from the Democratic Convention when it was exposed. They tried to take God out and and uh, basically out of the platform. And African Americans didn't move. If anyone should have moved, it should have been African Americans. But the fact of the matter is, uh, what he promised Planned Parenthood, Barack Obama, in the Freedom of Choice Act, he hid it inside of Obamacare. He is saying to every conscious American, we control your conscience. We will tell you what to pay for. You will buy this and it will support the killing of a baby and you have to like it. Lines drawn in the sand, okay? And this nation is heading towards a major confrontation it's going to be of civil war proportion. I agree. Stay there. Exactly. Exactly. A race war because that's all they can pull. Now, meanwhile, 50 plus million babies have been killed. They, they, this is so evil. And instead of us having a civil war against the tyrants, they want to make it a black white civil war. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple, dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield formulation, fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield shield and other pioneering formulations at infowarslife.com today let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the info war at the same time that's infowarslife.com goes away in the air. let's go back to reverend shoulders in this short segment and you we'll break down some of the history of the black genocide on the other side but the genocide of people in this country those that are least advantaged is a beta test in all the documents we covered last hour for everybody. The secret testing, all of it, it's being done to everybody. And Planned Parenthood and the Democratic Modern Party, I'm not even a Republican, folks, were set up to kill black people. I've got all the letters, all the documents, Margaret Sanger. And it's just what makes me sick about MSNBC and Harris Perry and all of them is they're just monsters, folks. And I've been around Democrats behind the scenes for years. And they are the nastiest group. They'll, they'll look at you, black, white, I don't care, particularly black. They go, there's not enough money. We need to get rid of these black people these, and say bad names about them. And my thing is, is that these idiots believe Bill Gates when he says, kill a granny. Kill granny. Get rid of granny. And then you can have 10 teacher's jobs. It's this idea that we kill people and get stuff. Folks, Japan's going to collapse. Italy's going to collapse. They have 1.2, 1.3 kids for every two adults. You need 2.1 replacement rate to even hold civilization up. And the globalists know this. And it makes me upset. Reverend Shoulders, I'm ranting. Keep making your points. Where you were going with this clash where they're going to make Christians pay for abortions, violating the First Amendment. I mean, it's just never going to end. Go ahead. This is the most imposing and egregious legislation ever passed uh, in this nation's history. And uh, I, it was Albert Einstein who said, never surrender conscience, even if the state demands it. Well, he grew up in Germany. He knew what he was talking about. The state is demanding your conscience right now, America. The state is saying we are your conscience and we make your decisions. There's no such thing. We determine right and wrong. This is a serious time in this country and we need to wake up. Now, you, you mentioned the, uh, the uh, reporter from MSNBC. Uh, that made the comment about the Romney child. You have to understand how this is all going down, what their means of seduction is. They have to lay claim to the civil rights movement. They have to say they're the benevolent ones. They're the ones that are caring for uh, the African-American and they use it as a means to embarrass whites 
and to control white America by then calling them racist if you don't agree with them. So here's a perfect example I'm talking about. It was proven this past week. Phil Robinson, God bless him, Duck Dynasty, stood up for his conviction, stood up and said, homosexuality is basically wrong. Same-sex marriage is wrong. It was a GQ magazine interview. Mainstream media said, here's our chance to exert our power. We're going to get them to back down. Here's Jesse Jackson. You got to meet with me in 72 hours or we're going to you know, insinuate we're going to boycott you. Thank God A&E told them to go take a hike. And But yet also, thank God, money does speak. The family stuck together. So he's right back where he's supposed to be. Why am I even mentioning this? In the same week, I repeat, the same week, Louis Farrakhan, the main potentate, the main leader for the Muslim movement in this country, went to the pulpit in Chicago and said, homosexuals should be beheaded. Why wasn't there any media about that? Is because they didn't want to bring attention to a prominent black male speaking against same-sex marriage that they had no answer to because this is not the scenario they're trying to project. Well, uh, to, especially to they only want to demonize Christians, too. <laughs> right. And so here it is. Right. Exactly. Anything to do with Christ, Christian, they will attack, they will abuse. They will I want to ask you why that is, Reverend, on the other side, then get into some of the history of black genocide that you're an expert on. We'll be right back with uh, our guests. And this stuff really shakes me up, folks, because it's so bizarro world where you're racist if you don't want to kill black babies. And then black people, liberal black people, get in your face like they want to get in a fight with you if you don't want to kill black people. I'm not kidding. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? I'm your host, Alex Jones. Reverend Childress is our guest. BlackGenocide.org, Pastor Clintard, Howard Childress is our guest. And if you look at it, they only assault Christianity. They try to take it over. They try to mega church it. They try to Romans 13 it. They try to infraguard it, clergy response team it, faith-based initiative it, totally take it over. World Council of Churches, ecumenical, all of it. And now they've got it down to the point where they're going to make Catholic churches, Protestant churches, you name it, pay for abortion coverage. Uh, and they've got a tax in Travis County, only county in Texas where taxpayers pay an abortion fee. So uh, that's the type of stuff that's going on, and it's about forcing you to do what they want. Look at Italy. Just said a 60-year-old man can grab an 11-year-old out of the back of a yard and rape them, and the social workers say it's love. That's the actual AFP headline. Uh, they can teach five-year-olds how to uh, have bestiality, you name it, in public schools. Uh, and, and again, it's called, it's called being, being politically correct. No, no, it's called evil taking over. And it's called assaulting uh, everything that's good. And, and at the bottom of the rabbit hole, I've learned, is really evil people. And <sighs> I'm not here judging people that have good hearts and don't consciously try to go out and do bad stuff. But these globalists get off on the bat and they want to pull down all that's good and there's a war on christianity so uh reverend childress uh, talk about that and why they're persecuting uh, the christians and where you think this is going and why do you think they're accelerating their program with the same woman that made fun of mitt romney's grandchild being black in a white family uh and said you know there's nothing that you know these people are all different you know and is this racist or whatever uh, dividing people, and is the same one that says the state controls your kids. I mean, they're really out in the open pushing the whole agenda. You know, uh, unfortunately, and, and it's a deep unfortunately, <laughs> that it's still, you know, politics is perception. And we still, this Amer America still feels that the Democratic Party were the facilitators of civil rights. And so these things that they're doing is actually to to help people and to be upward and mobile, and they could be nothing further than the truth. And you mentioned this case in England. I didn't hear of it before, and I'm, and I'm thank thank God I am here because I just had the discussion that the clergy do not realize that pedophilia is next. They're gaining this ground through the judicial tyranny on same-sex marriage. Pretty soon everything if you can change the definition of marriage you can change it and, and of course you did it with the sanctity of life the definition of what life is 
you can now indeed communicate that what that man did to that 11 year old girl is love. And our society, Christian, if you're a Christian, the line is drawn now. If we fold on this, we're done. We are done. And so uh, I didn't never want it to come to this. I never thought I'd live in America that there would be a day of time like this, but it has come and there must be a clear message sent to this administration. We will not comply. It's plain and simple. We will not comply. And whatever that means, we have to then just, you know, take the hit. We are Americans. This is not, this is un-American. It's unconstitutional. I don't know what is in Congress these days, but this certainly now we the people must galvanize. We the people. It has to be just like Duck Dynasty. If Pop don't go on, we all don't go on. <laughs> That's the way it has to be right now. And so they have gained uh, <clears throat> this 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 mindset that I believe only. Uh, good people. You mentioned what's at the bottom of the barrel. Uh, once again, uh, Edmund Burke, all evil has to do is tr the triumph is for good people to say nothing and be silent. All the good people now, we have to take it up another level, another notch. We have to be vocal. This, the line is drawn, proceed no further. I believe Notre Dame today has to comply, according to the judge to Obamacare. They have to provide these contraceptives. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Just, just don't do it. You can't do it at this point. Well, look at how they're openly trying to tell churches what they can and can't do. That That's totally the Soviet Union. I mean, there's no doubt that this it, is illegal. It's, it's socialism. It's communism. Whatever you want to call it, it's a takeover. I said from the beginning, and thank God for people like Ben Carson was still echoing. This was never about health care. Never about health care. It was about control from day one. It's about control. It's about uh, intrusion. It's about being able to sort out who our enemies are of the present administration. I mean, this is undoubtedly the we're at the threshold here and there's only one people, those good people you talked about, those good Americans, we cannot allow this. You just can't comply. You must, we must now turn this around in such fashion, peaceably, I believe, is the way to do it. I am a student of Dr. King, but uh, there's no doubt you cannot comply to this. Your rights are being taken away. Your freedoms are being taken away. And worst of all, conscience. You cannot allow government to dictate to you your conscience. And whether they like it or not, this is a Judeo-Christian country, Judeo-Christian built on those Christian principles. That is under attack. That is being stripped. That is what really is at the core of all of this. But that's what the mindset of which birthed this country. Flawed, yes, but always remember, those flaws were dealt with through the Constitution and through the spirit of the Constitution. That's right. That's right. The Bill of Rights was awesome. Sure, yeah. it wasn't realized. It still hasn't been fully realized. But yeah, we know I, what's coming in is, is classical tyranny, not classical uh, liberty. But I mean, it, it is a spirit of the world, though. It, it really does yeah. come down to this, that they're after real Christians. They're after homeschoolers. They're openly saying they're going to outlaw that in Ohio and places. I mean, they're coming. We've got to get on the offense now because, uh, because they're not going to back down. Offense, offense, offense. We waited too long as it is. It shouldn't have got to this point. And um, that's that's why I'm doing a march in October. I'm I'm I will be at rallies. I'll be at the Walk for Life San Francisco. I'm gonna tell you right now, um, that is gonna be a highly charged political uh, speech I give. Um, and and there's no doubt. I know they listen to my phone. I'm, I'm sure they know my website. The Congressional Black Caucus even mentioned me by name. I was very proud of that. But the fact of the matter is, if we do not stand up now, the America as we know it will be long gone. And I would not want to believe that some people would say this law cannot be repealed. Any law 
can be repealed. That's all psych warfare when the Republican right. leadership won't right. get rid of it and, oh, it can't. And, oh, it's right. it's a giant social takeover, social engineering, death panels. Uh, the, the, the big banks are behind it because they want all the extra money. I mean, this is the end of this country. And yes. people are saying, oh, we can't repeal it when it's completely unpopular across the board. It's all mind games. We have crooks in Washington. They have a 6% approval rating in Congress. They need to be arrested. This yes. is a criminal conspiracy. And if they can yes. kill 53 million babies, of course they can do secret testing on people. And of course they can radiate foster children and shoot people up with syphilis. And of course they can teach pedophilia in schools. Because we've let the crazy people that crave the power take over every level of society. You know, everybody my age that you may feel your time you know, to retire or to lay back. No, we know the way. We know what the, the, the heart and the, and the vision of the great visionaries of this country had for this country. And you're right. You know, I do a piece. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Uh, the nation never really held that truth. But one day, I believe, Dr. King said, we would hold that truth. I believe right now this is a defining hour where truly, you know, I don't want to use the term take our country back or that, but basically getting back to the heart of the Constitution, to the heart of the Declaration of Independence. In it is the most powerful political document ever, ever, ever conceived. We have to get back there, demand there. It is still we the people. It's not perfect, but what is coming down the pike now is criminal. It is not freedom. It certainly isn't the vision of the founding fathers. And we have to be more vocal. We have to go to PTA boards. We have to go to our local town meetings and council meetings. We certainly have to go to the legislature. We have to use the uh, the intimidation of we the people. There's more of us than them. Case closed. We have to use that. And all of us have to step up. We're losing. Uh, I will not turn willfully uh, to my grandchildren uh, a nation uh, uh, such of this of this caliber. It would be criminal upon me not to do everything. That sure. Well, life. I mean, Reverend. Also, look how historically, once things get to this point, things collapse. It's not just going to keep rotting for a long time. Now, all of the liberty and all the blessings are leaving. The curses are coming. We're being yeah. overrun. Uh, all our basic freedoms are going away. The prosperity is going away. I mean, we know the wages of this collectivist new world order are death. We know the fruits of this system are not good. And people like yourself unquestionably have to keep sounding that message. We can't assume people recognize that this is it. 2014, probably the most important year of our nation's history due to the climate and where we're at right now. It has never been this bad and if there isn't a turnaround in 2014 i i don't see us recovering because it would mean that we capitulated and allowed this to go on without a significant a significant upheaval and certainly uh letting our voices be heard in november this is a this is extremely pivotal year anyone who believes in righteousness and the goodness of the uh, of the country the constitution the declaration of independence i mean anyone who co holds those things dear you have to ask what level do i take this to now and whatever we've been doing is not good enough i'm talking about myself too whatever i've done obviously is not good enough it's got to go to another level Th this this is this is war and um, if indeed we are to survive, it's going to take those good people you mentioned earlier to, to, to know that good will triumph if good speaks up. If good is willing to sacrifice and go to the front line, good will prevail. God is still on the throne, but he's waiting for the good people to step forward. What's going to happen if we don't turn the country around? I don't even want to think about that. I'm going to be honest with you. I've never thought, as I stated earlier, that I would never live in a country where there is no, I mean, how can you have an administration that just totally ignores the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence with impunity? I mean, who is challenging 
this 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 onslaught against the rights of, of of its citizens. And so the citizens at this point have to rise up. I I can look at throughout history and see where this has happened in other countries. Once again, never thinking it could happen here. But I better be taking better notes on what I used to see in other nations because it is here. And if we do not rise up, and it's not going to be whether you're white or black, it's going to be whether you are you believe in righteousness. Do you, you believe that marriage is between one man, one woman? Do you believe that that is a baby, the sanctity of life? Those are the things that are going to galvanize. Do you believe you have the right? To, to basically to believe as you choose to believe and to worship as you choose to worship. Do you have those rights? And for what I know of the history, that Christianity ought to trump all those. Why should I be in a nation that was founded by those principles and watch them dismantle those principles and every emblem or sign of those principles without saying something? It's just, this is absurd. And then have the public schools, for those that don't know, all over the country teach very small children, uh, kindergarten, first, second, third grade, stuff that I didn't even know about until I was 20 years old. And that's in this corrupt, decadent world. They the, and, and teaching kids they can be a boy, girl, or both, and you can have your own bathroom. I mean, that that is pedophilia. That is setting the precedent that the Absolutely. state is going to do what they want with your kids. And they've said that. Why that's do you think they're moving so fast right now? Because... I do see a backlash. Uh, do you think they're moving fast because they see us gaining ground, or why do you think they're coming out of the of the sicko closet with with the pedophilia and the the state owns your kids and uh, we're gonna take your eleven year old to have an abortion even if you don't want it? I mean, why why are they doing this, Reverend? It's so it's, it's shockingly. So I have to believe it's evil's deadline that I can't see um, humans being that galvanized and, and that strategic. It's almost like it is pure evil as if it knows something that we don't and that we must get this nation to succumb. If this nation succumbs, they basically have the world. If the Christians in America fold, they will fold, They, they in their mindset, it will fold globally. So we have to understand we are at that point. We're at the crossroads. I, once again, you, you, you're mentioning so many fronts, the schools. Most of your listeners, I don't believe, know that they are already conditioning your children for pedophilia. There's going to be a lack of identity crisis. In the African-American community, can you imagine how painful and how hurtful that's going to be when there's already 70% of the homes do not have the, the, the very element that God started with first man in the house. The, and, and, you're gonna, and, you, and you think they're not going to have a problem with identity? Are you thinking they're not going to have a problem with their sexuality? Absolutely. And the, and the public school system feels this is the America that we are creating now. It's too demonic. It, there's no way in the world this could be a person. This is a group of people whom we probably don't ever see no doubt and and uh I, I honestly believe the rollout was a message from god to us this is what you're agreeing to i believe that the nsa and the irs and all this being exposed thank god for snowden uh, uh that is being exposed that is saying we are coming into a police state where we will not have any say so and certainly they're not going to want to hear about our religion remember religion is the opiate of the people this is the man's face who has chosen to bring this new world. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. By the way,
Friday because of Fukushima getting unstable again and the fuel rod removal and that radioactive wave coming towards the United States. Obviously, the federal government has ordered 14 million dosages of the uh, medical type uh, iodine that protects the thyroid from radiation. But that's for the federal workers. We called them yesterday, the videos up on Infowars.com. And uh, they hung up when we brought up Fukushima. It's very incriminating, very, uh, very scary. Here's some of the other headlines. Iran says Saudi intelligence ordered embassy bombing in Lebanon. Yeah, they also ordered the bombing of the Russians. Scientists look for evidence of time travelers on the Internet. <laughs> That's not our kind of story usually, but they're actually doing it. Crazed uh, hypocrite uh, Congressman King calls Snowden terrorist appeaser when our own government runs Al-Qaeda. Labels New York Times an accomplice. Did North Korea Kim Jong-un feed his uncle to the starving dogs? That's the craziness of authoritarianism. Government official hangs up when asked about iodine purchases. There's that article by Paul Joseph Watson. Infographic on Infowars.com. How to handle a police encounter. Now Disney can track your every move with NSA-style wristbands. That's just some of the stories up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And we are, I'm sorry the other callers, I'm out of time. I got to deal with some stuff with family after the show. Uh, all right, go into overdrive and take your calls. But I'll be back Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. We're going to get a final word from Reverend Childress here in a moment. But, folks, here's the deal. I, in my gut, feel empathy when I know they're targeting black people to kill 52% of them. And then it makes me mad when they weaponize the black culture through MTV to, to make it anti-white, everything else, and to push the whole agenda. I mean, it's just, like, incredible. It's like you're trying to save people, you're trying to save yourself, and then they're taught to hate you. And then that makes white people think the blacks are all out to get them, and that creates the hate on the other side, which is divide and conquer. And just to watch these evil people, especially on MSNBC, knowingly punching buttons, following playbooks, makes me very, very angry. And I'm beyond anger because I want a civilization, I want a future. And let me tell you something, folks, if they can target black people with all these secret tests and aborting them, they can do it to anybody. And that's why I have empathy. Empathy is because in your gut, in your spirit, you know what's happening to somebody else is happening to you because you're connected to them. And it's going to end up happening to your family. And so we better all come together against the New World Order and realize Barack Obama is the more effective of evils. He's carrying the ball for the New World Order. It's not that the Republican leadership's good either. Notice how they're going after the Tea Party because it's got real people in it that know what's going on. That's why they say it's racist, because they don't want black people or anybody else to feel like they could have the American dream of a Bill of Rights, Constitution, due process. That's what this is about, folks. So I think the answer is white people need to go to the black neighborhoods. Black people need to go to the white neighborhoods. Everybody needs to start coming together uh, uh, for the Bill of Rights and Constitution. People organize themselves in groups. We need to organize ourselves as Christians and people that love justice. Co uh, final comments, Reverend Childress. Uh, you said it. That's right. And that's what's going to happen. I believe that we're going to come based on values um, that we no longer judge anyone by the color of her skin, but by the content of character. And that's all we're going to have is the same values. Uh, the beauty of the Tea Party, Tea Party is that no one perceived it. It birthed out of disdain for laws that were infringing upon their rights and upon their wealth and prosperity. Uh, this has to continue to grow. And unquestionably that I believe it will always come from people who have a heart uh, for the things of God, I think is something that God is waiting for. He did say, if my people, which are called by my name. And so we have to recognize we're at that point. Please don't wait for 2015. Uh, we have to do this. this year. There has to be a clear clarion cry this year. This year, this time, this season. So everyone just, in their spirit, yes. everyone in their spirit has got to realize that there's dread in the air. And you're right. We take action. God will move. We've got to walk out on faith. Historically, we will get the providence to turn the tide. God bless you, sir. And uh, people Thank can visit your website, blackgenocide.org. It's invaluable. Thank you so much, Reverend. Thank you for having me. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.